Live from downtown Bakersfield, 23 ABC News at 6 starts now. Good evening. We begin tonight with the frustration in Trona, a small community just outside Kern County and outside the area that was hit. Uh, it was hit hardest by that record setting quake. Many residents say they feel left in the dark and ignored. 23 ABC's Emma Lockhart joins us tonight live from Trona and has more on how the community there is struggling to get back on their feet. Emma. That's right, Tim and Jess, I'm here in Trona, the hardest hit community following those back to back earthquakes. Take a look at this roadway. It shows just how extensive some of the damage is. You can see that roadway completely raised. That's the case for many roadways across the town. This roadway currently blocked off because it's unsafe to drive on. And not only that, but this community is still without running water. They're now asking the county of San Bernardino for more resources. For myself and many people, we were extremely heartbroken. I mean, we thought they don't care if we die. They don't care if we starve. They don't care that we don't have any water. The small community of Trona of about 2000 people rationing their limited supplies of essentials Monday. Two is enough. Two is enough. Residents are still without running water and frustrations among people are reaching a tipping point. We pay taxes. We, we do what we have to do to fund our county. And when we need our county the most, they haven't been here. In the aftermath of the double quakes rocking the small town outside of Ridgecrest, residents say their county failed them. San Bernardino County didn't respond like they should have. Kern County didn't want to respond to us like they should have. We're, we're their neighbors. We exist. Community members say it wasn't until Sunday that county officials responded to the hard hit area. For the first couple of days, we were basically on our own as far as uh, taking care of the community and getting waters and, and, and food supplies and any sort of emergency supplies out here. However, Supervisor Robert Lovingood says he and county fire were on scene Thursday, handing out water and other resources. Officials say the county emergency services pulled the city for damage. Trona lost power, but it is now restored. However, massive cracks still ripple throughout the roads. Brick chimneys are toppled and the infrastructure of homes are knocked down. But we're still struggling with food because the stores are closed. Not any, not everybody can get to Ridgecrest because a lot of elderly people here, disabled people. And with the only town hall held in Ridgecrest Sunday, where officials addressed public concerns, some Trona residents felt out of the loop. Why why do we not know what's going on? Like why do we have we don't have any leaders here? But multiple agencies were in Trona Monday, including the National Guard handing out water and supplies at Trona High School. However, residents say they are barely getting by and more help is needed. But toiletries, uh, toilet paper, paper towels, napkins, wipes, uh, like I said, first aid, all that kind of stuff. Ice. We could really use ice. We're 110 degrees almost every day and our water supply is is, is warm. And that was uh, Emma Lockhart reporting for us tonight. New details. Also, the Ridgecrest Branch Library will be open for regular business beginning tomorrow. Kern County Chief Administrative Officer Ryan Alsop said the library, battered by the two recent earthquakes in Ridgecrest, will be open for regular business hours on Tuesday. Books initially, there's the pictures, knocked off their shelves there after the 6.4 earthquake foreshock on July 4th. A second larger 7.1, of course, shook the area the next day. Last week and over the weekend, library staff working to clean up and place books back on the shelves. Well, now emergency officials are working to get Ridgecrest back on its feet. In the midst of more aftershocks, officials held a town hall meeting trying to answer questions swirling around the high desert community. The event was held at the Kerr McGee Community Center on Sunday. People were able to try and get their questions answered. Officials told attendees about the distribution center in Trona, the health services available, and how to report structural damage. Ridgecrest Mayor Peggy Breeden also talked about the community's resilience in the face of disaster. But I know we have heroes in this community, heroes who have done for others before themselves, people who have said, count me in, I'm willing to work, I'm willing to donate, I'm willing to fix up, I am there for all of you. Take you in my car. 
Officials also stressed how lucky it was that no one died in the powerful tremor and Ridgecrest officials are reminding everyone impacted by the quake to check their homes and businesses for possible structural damage. If you suspect your home or business has been damaged by the quake, you are encouraged to call 1-760-499-5083. That number's on your screen right now. You can also make reports online through email at quakedamage at ridgecrest-ca.gov. Ridgecrest police say the city has a task force force of inspectors available to review conditions. And we spoke with officials from Kern County Fire with some tips about how you can prepare for the event of an earthquake. Take a listen. When we're thinking about earthquakes, we're thinking about things that could topple over and could injure you that way. Uh, so go around the home, identify those things and and to take care of those things, making sure that they're firmly secured in the event of an earthquake. As a family, individuals can help to teach their kids what to do when things do start shake, start to shake, uh, how to drop, to cover, to hold on. Oftentimes, injuries from earthquakes aren't from a complete building collapse, but rather it's an injury from things falling on them. More things you can do right now on our website, turn to 23.com. Meantime, the repairing process has begun on highways impacted by the recent quakes. Caltrans starting work on Highway 178, about six miles east of Ridgecrest. The 178 there experiencing cracking in three separate areas within a four mile stretch due to the seismic activity. After the quakes, Caltrans said crews made temporary repairs to the 178. One way traffic control is in effect while permanent repairs are made. The construction there set to last through the end of the week. And according to Caltrans, an emergency order allocating $3.1 million for needed repairs now on the way. The Kern County Fire Department is reminding everyone tonight the importance of being prepared for disaster, earthquake or otherwise, emphasizing two different apps that can be a lifeline in the event of an emergency. The first is Ready Kern. It's the alert system locally, a local system designed to notify you if there is a safety concern here in Kern County. If you download the app, you'll receive emergency voice and text message alerts. We have a direct link where you can sign up for the emergency alerts on our website. Turn to 23.com. Another app you can use is Smart 911. This local app can provide valuable information to emergency crews like allergies, pets, disabilities, and other details that are valuable in a disaster situation. Both apps can be used in the event of earthquakes, severe weather, fires, or floods. Well, taking you into the 23 ABC Live Center because scientists with the U.S. Geological Survey say there are possible chances of more earthquakes that could strike Kern County in the next week. It's what's on everybody's mind. You can see some of the earthquakes that we've had and aftershocks that we've had in Kern County so far. Now, the chance of an earthquake of a magnitude 5.0 or higher is about 56%. Odds of 6.0 or higher, about 8%. Chances of 7.0 or higher, only 1%, which is a little bit of a relief. But I want to show you this video that the USGS posted on their Twitter account. You can see these little yellow dots popping up. This is actually every earthquake or aftershock that happened just before the event on July 4th up until today. This was posted about six hours ago, but you can see just how far and wide those earthquakes have been ranging, something we're still going to keep an eye on. But as we mentioned, officials saying the chances for one that is 7.0 or higher, very unlikely at this time, but they are warning us to stay on our toes. Tim. All right, Jess, thanks for that. Our family in Ridgecrest trying to deal with the impacts of the quakes, but say they're fearful of staying under their own roof. For the time being, they're staying outdoors in tents. For my first one, it was pretty weird, I guess, because I never felt one and how it shakes a lot. I just get scared and I stay still and I run. This family from Ridgecrest was home Friday when that 7.1 hit. They say they went outside talked and prayed. They then decided out of safety to stay outdoors in tents. And with that in mind, FEMA has some suggestions for the younger ones in your family dealing with the aftermath of these earthquakes. For adults, they say it's comforting for your children if you express your own concerns openly and let them know it's normal to be afraid. Encourage your children, according to experts, to talk about their fears to help them sort it out. Keep an eye on your little ones for ongoing signs, though, of emotional distress, avoiding things that remind them of the event and leading them to have nightmares. And finally, FEMA says don't be afraid to let children know that you understand why they're scared. And of course, we're going to continue to have complete coverage on the earthquakes with the latest from authorities, experts and local officials. We'll also have pictures and video and live feeds from the areas that are hit. Head on to our website, turn to 23.com. And of course, be sure to download our mobile and tablet apps as well as sign up for our push alerts to get the latest information. You can catch up on all of our earthquake coverage on our streaming platforms 
Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Alexa. And we are tracking those fault lines that are across the region as well as for us here in Kern County. So the orange color that you are seeing, an active fault line, and that's just around the area of Ridgecrest where we have been tracking a sequence of earthquakes that began last week, continuing throughout the day today. So all these white dots that you are seeing, that is more than 100 earthquakes in the region of a magnitude of 2.5 or higher. The strongest was actually a 3.9 magnitude earthquake. That was earlier this morning. So we will be continuing to track the aftershocks from the big quake that happened on Friday. That was a 7.1 magnitude earthquake, but thankfully for all the residents in those areas as well as first responders, temperatures did stay below seasonal this afternoon. 94 degrees right now in Ridgecrest in those 70s into Hatchby and low 90s for us here in Bakersfield. I'll let you know what conditions you can expect this evening as well as for the rest of your work week coming up next. The Bakersfield Police Department is asking for your help in locating a person involved in an alleged sexual assault in Southwest Bakersfield and officials have released a composite of the suspect. This is the composite released by the police department. According to BPD, a woman was walking on the bike path near the park at Riverwalk. She was reportedly approached by a man who then sexually assaulted her. Officers say the suspect then ran away. He's described as a white man around 35 to 40 years old, about 5 feet 10 inches tall with a thin build. If you have any information on who he may be or ask to call BPD at 327-7111. Well, coming up here at 6 and in sports, we take a look inside a sport that's bringing some attention and hardware back to Bakersfield. Allison? And we are tracking a few more days of temperatures below seasonal, but the return of the triple digits is near. I'll let you know when coming up next. Welcome back to 23 ABC Sports. There's a team here in town that many people probably don't know about, but they are heating things up over at Skateland this summer. And that's where we find sports director Carrie Osev tonight in South Bakersfield. Looks like you're all <laughs> geared up there, Carrie. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm geared up. I'm a little nervous, but we're going to focus on the team that can do this best. We have three roller derby teams here in Bakersfield and the youngest of the group, a co-ed group. They are heating things up and helping to spotlight not only Bakersfield, but the sport of roller derby. If you head over to Skateland during Bakersfield's hot summer days, it's more than just parties heating up on the roller skating rink. It's like I changed my shirt like three times. I have to do that because I sweat a lot. So uh, that's, that's part of the mentally preparing. These days, the Diamond City Miners are those feeling the heat of Bakersfield and of competition. This junior roller derby team is putting their sport and their city on the map. Definitely it's something that I like to brag about, like, oh yeah, we come from Bakersfield, and it was like, where's that? So nobody really knows about Bakersfield, so to say we're a homegrown team, yeah, it's really cool. Having won back-to-back -back titles. Because of the fact Roller Dibri is not known by a lot of people, it was cool going to school and be like, I'm a two-time national champion. Roller Derby can be a lot of things. It's a mental game. It's really tough. It's a lot of teamwork and a lot of training. But this sport is a different competitiveness because it's not, you're on eight wheels. Not every athlete is on eight wheels. With the premise of the game for skaters, known as jammers, to score points by lapping other members. But for Bryce, it's all about the defense. Because if we can hold their jammer back the entire two minutes while our jammer is scoring points, we've got the game in our hands. Actually, it's a lot like other sports. Defense wins championships 100%. And this team is looking for a third straight championship with competition coming up at the end of the month. There's nothing I want more than to just win again. For those of you who are still a little unsure, these athletes have a response. I would tell them just to try it. Just try it at least once. All right, guys, so you see I got the skates, I got the knee pads, I got the wrist guards and the elbow pads, and one of the top skaters on the team, Bryce Swall, you saw him in the story. So Bryce, for beginners like me, you can see me wobbling, what would you have me do to get started and get acclimated to the sport? Uh, first, I would have you uh, sticky skate. So okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't let you pick up your skates, so just, or just So like a little like this? Out, like an out and in moment, moment. Okay, forward. okay. So you want to yeah. <laughs> I told you guys I'm nervous. This is why. Here we go. Okay. Okay. 
Just go right out in it. Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna fall on live TV. That's not gonna happen, Bryson. Nope. Trust you. I got you. Okay, so. <laughs> so stay in the squatting position. Okay. Squat. And go. And then you go <laughs> in. And you wanna kind of yeah. Wing so. Okay. All right, guys, and I'm here to tell you, so this is to show you guys how tough this is. You guys are fearless. You wear it on your helmets, a lot of you. You guys have this national competition coming up at the end of the month in Colorado, yeah. trying to bring home the third state championship. Guys, I'm going to start practicing. Um, we're going to maybe cut the camera so if I fall, you guys don't get to see it. But or anyway, you guys got to check out this, the Diamond City Miners. They're going to be competing for the national championship third straight. But I'm going to go to skating, so uh, wish me luck, guys, and we'll send it back to you. All right, a natural-born uh, jammer. <laughs> She's kind of jam around there. I wanted to just take that feed live for the rest of the show. Yeah, we see, could live stream it, maybe. We would love to just see how that ended She's up. She's got the pads on. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Safe, sure, safety good. first. All right, oh, Allison, yeah. let's talk about weather, though, shall we? We know we've been comfortable. It's been warm, mm -hmm. but comfortable. I'm dreading those triple digits. Unfortunately, they are just around the corner, but any day that is spent below those triple digits across Kern County is welcomed in July, and that's exactly what we were feeling today. High temperatures across the county, a high of 99 degrees in Ridgecrest, so just shy of that 100 degree mark. 95 is a high in Cal City, 92 for us here in Bakersfield, and 76 as a high in Tehachapi. So these temperatures are below seasonal, and that is going to be the trend for at least one more day. But this evening, we are going to be seeing winds picking up, especially in our mountain and desert cities. 74 degrees in Tehachapi at this hour, dropping down to 64 by 10 p.m. 83 in Mojave and down to 74 as we head into the afternoon. But those winds are going to be picking up. That's because our latest storm system has made its way into the Pacific Northwest. That's going to be the case again for your Tuesday, but we are going to be dry with that increase in winds, especially in those mountain and desert regions. Gusts could be reaching up to 30 miles per hour, but thankfully air quality is going to be staying in the moderate range for at least the the next day we will have an AQI of 90 tomorrow, but let's talk about these temperatures staying at or below seasonal through Wednesday and then slowly warming up to a high of 98 degrees by Thursday and the return of the triple digits by Friday, Saturday, as well as into next week. The warmest day of the week looks to be on Saturday with the high of 105. This looks to be our second heat wave of the season. The Kern River Valley will have a high of 88 degrees tomorrow. Tehachapi and Fraser Park in those upper 70s, low 80s. So again, very similar to what we were feeling today. Below seasonal, not too bad. But then the next few days, it's going to be warming right on up. What we expect for July. Yep, I was going to say this is normal. As yeah. you pointed out, this is what we are used to. We've yep. just been kind of. We've been lucky. Oh yeah. yeah. Lucky. Find your favorite pool. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, Allison, we'll still ahead. As communities work to recover from last week's earthquakes, many across Kern County working to help. More on the donations now. Now flowing in when 23 ABC News at 6 returns. This moment of human kindness is sponsored by Dignity Health. Hello, human kindness. Well, welcome back. In the wake of those two back-to-back -back quakes after various sho aftershocks, there's been one good thing to come from it all. In tonight's Hello, Human Kindness, we look at how people are quickly coming together to help those impacted by the quakes. As high school football players at one local school prepare for the upcoming season, some athletes took a moment to tackle some of the issues in Ridgecrest. Garces High student athletes teamed up to help the family of one of their teammates and other victims. They held a water drive this weekend and the Bakersfield community responded. A lot of people have been texting me a lot because we put it on social media and it's out there and a lot of people want to stop by and bring all the water that they can to help out the community. These students say they will deliver the collected cases of bottled water to the community this upcoming Wednesday. Another story of human kindness today. The office of State Senator Shannon Grove with delivering water to residents in the Trona area over the weekend. The senator saying her staff was doing their part to help the victims there. They held a water drive at Grove's office on Truxton here in downtown Bakersfield where water donations were collected or to staff saying the water will be delivered to the residents of Trona today and we'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back. Uh, nice now, but uh, summer temperatures <laughs> coming right around. Oh, they are coming right back as we head into the weekend. But before that, temperatures are going to be near seasonal for your Tuesday and Wednesday sunny skies. And then 102 by Friday. And it looks like our second heat wave is upon us. Ooh, stay in the shade or maybe a yeah. pool this weekend. Exactly. Wow, <laughs> that's going to do it for us here at 6. We'll see you on the now at 7. Good night.